Hi, I'm Nagin. And I'm Dean. And we're in Charlottesville, Virginia, um, where we're launching the Boycott Bigotry Campaign. We were supposed to say that together. What is the Boycott Bigotry Campaign? I hear nobody asking me. Well, let me explain. We're annoyed about two major things about the Trump administration. Well, we're actually annoyed about like 700 things, but we've narrowed it down to two major things. One is profiting off being president. The man sits in the office of the presidency and earns money off of the back of American taxpayers. What? Secondly, his bigotry we saw during the campaign and still as present, demonizing various minority groups. It's kind of on the daily with the racism and the bigotry and the xenophobia with this guy. So to together, we wanted to do boycott bigotry, addressing both his corruption and his bigotry. He's got two properties here in Charlottesville and we've been running ads all over town in newspapers, encouraging people not to go to those properties. So let's see what Charlottesville has in store for us. Seville newspaper. We put up one of our ads. Hey! Ooh, look at that! Right next to the Soduku. That is very popular. That's some good placement. Trump huh? Winery, aged with notes of Trump's racism in every bottle. I love Trump. I think he's a great. I think he's a great president. I think he's done a lot for our country. Um, I think he's done a lot for trade. I think he's done a lot for... Um, yeah, he started a bunch of trade wars. Would you ever go to a Trump property, a Trump hotel, a Trump golf course, or the winery and spend any of your money there? Oh, hell no. I never really thought about it because for me, it's a non-entity. Like, yeah. I don't go there. Right. Um, you have Trump property blindness. When Trump stays at the Mar-a-Lago, for example, Secret Service has to pay Trump to also stay at the Mar-a-Lago with taxpayer money to then protect Trump. Um, does that strike you as like a conflict of interest? No, why would it be? Well, because like Trump is earning money off of having the Secret Service stay there. Oh. Because he owns the hotel. Oh, because they have to stay at the hotel. And yeah. He... Oh, well that's silly. It's silly that that he's earning money off of the backs of American taxpayers, or <laughs> it's silly no, that people I, are annoyed that he's earning money off of the backs of American taxpayers. It's silly that people are annoyed. Does the bigotry of Trump bother you? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Like, it, everything about that man disgusts me. Is it fair to say to them, if you're spending money in a Trump property, you're supporting his bigotry? Is that fair for us to say that? If his name and his brand is Trump, then yes because it's really his ego you're paying into. I guess it's not important to run the country. It's important to, you know, to, to go and do what you want to do on America's dime. I was a bon an Obama um, voter. No. Oh, sorry. No. No. <laughs> oh. No. Oh, God. God. God, no. There's just a very fine line between liberals and conservatives. Yeah. If you if you actually go through and listen to Obama's speeches in the past, and you listen to Trump, they generally say the same thing. Well, I don't know that Obama ever called like Mexicans murderers and rapists. So I'm Muslim and I'm, I'm actually, my, my entire family is from Iran, which is a Muslim banned country. And as a result, they can't, no one from my family can now come and visit me or my parents. Um, what does that make you feel? I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I'm sorry for you. We're actually going to be at Trump Winery tomorrow. <gasps> really? Are you going tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> so let's taste some wine together, okay? <laughs> let's taste some wine and see how, how a liberal and a, and a conservative taste wine differently. We decided to do a show here with our friend Jordan Carlos, cool. and I believe they call this a line down the block for the Boycott Bigotry show here in Charlottesville. I'm not, I mean, I'm so humble about it because let's be honest, it's a free show. Um, but still, that's really cool. There's all these people here coming to a church to see some Muslims. <laughs> it makes sense. Why? Why'd you guys choose Charlottesville? So One of the why? things about Charlottesville that was really um, that fucking drove me crazy was that when the heinousness happened here on August 12th with the Nazis and the 
or tragic murder. Trump gave a press conference, right? And then he was, then he said that whole thing about fine people on both sides. Mm -hmm. And then in the same breath, mm -hmm. he promoted his winery. I think there's blame on both sides. You look at you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it. Does anyone know I own a house in Charlottesville? Where is it? Oh boy, it's going to be. It's in Charlottesville. You'll see. I own actually one of the largest wineries in the United States. It's in Charlottesville. Yeah. Because he plugs whenever he has a chance to plug things to make money off the presidency. Two for yeah. Uh, we want this because this whole campaign is about combating both his corruption and his hate. Mm -hmm. So this like seemed like the perfect place at Charlottesville. He defended bigotry here and he, he's profiting off his winery. In fact, we met a c people today who- Who specifically came- From Georgia there. to go to his winery because they love him so much. So he's, sure. no joking, he's making money off his winery because people are coming to his properties. So they love him that much. They can get their Philip Trump, you know, have a have a glass of Bordeaux. Yeah. I well, mean, serve, what an afternoon. They only serve white wine. Hey. Trump is aging me. Anyone else feel like he's aging you? Like, it's, look, it's look at me. I'm 23. Look. I was in a boy band just a short time ago. I, such a weird time. It's such a weird time to be in this country. It's such a weird time to be, you know, in, in Russia. And, um... I like when Trump tries to tweet things into law. That's my favorite thing. I wake up every morning, probably just like you guys, you know, I don't follow him. I don't follow him on Twitter. I just check his every tweet. Right? <laughs> right? So I'll wake up, I check the weather, and then I go to Twitter, and I'm like, what's gonna thunder down from Mount Doom today? Right? I like when he tweet, tweets things into, into law, right? So he'll be like, okay, new law. <laughs> Children that are five years old are now six years old. <laughs> 100,000 likes, new law. The weather is really tempestuous because it's like we're here against the very core of our beliefs. We basically bought some like offset credits by launching an entire campaign to tell people not to come here. So we're not going to come here to enjoy it at all. If we so, look like we're enjoying it anytime, believe me, it's we're It's acting. an act. For like a vineyard owned by a racist xenophobe, it is quite beautiful. It's probably the top five of xenophobe races. Yeah, yeah, like if so I had to rank them, I would yeah, be like, magazine, this is... Not like wine magazine, wine enthusiast, but like white supremacist, <laughs> white supremacist wine, enthusiast, wine enthusiast. Top five. This would be, be up nice. there. Really lovely grounds. Um, which is something I don't, we don't, we don't give credit to, to bigots for um, their landscaping. We don't ever do that. And I, you know what? I'm going to correct that right now. People right now are sitting here enjoying their wine, talking about gutting Medicaid and programs in the safety net for America's most needy. I wonder if the grapes come from like a shithole country or maybe like a shithouse country. They have a table white, they've got a, a white Zimadel and then a white supremacy. This is their, uh, the tokenism. This rosé is like the Ben Carson of the selection. This wine right here, if you drink it, makes you want to build a wall and ban Muslims. What's a good wine if you find out your lawyer secretly recorded you Talking about paying off a Playboy playmate you had an affair with. Is there one for that one? I'm sorry. I just it's a, it's a lighter bodied wine, Fine. sparkling Fine. wine, with like a little, like a little like a xenophobia aftertaste. Are you getting that? Like a bigotry mouthfeel in it, I would say. I mean, just the smell of it like makes me want to like separate families at the border. Uh, do you have any Russian white wines? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we just randomly tasted some Trump wines. The good news is I don't actually know if they were good or bad because I can't tell. But I did. I can tell you that they all tasted like corruption, bigotry, and monstrous behavior. You know what's weird? People were like wave, like hello. Like, no, they were everyone like, really friendly. No, but like we were bonding, like you're in the cult too. Sort right, of like, right, right, we're right. We're both right. in Fight Club type of look going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So that was we were just like we just, um, we just created a Muslim population. We were the most. This, we were, we're the, the Muslim brownies. population at uh, at this winery. You were them. Huh? Hi. Did I assist you? 
No, we're good. We're just, just we're just out. taking photos and stuff. We're not taking photos, we're taking video. Yeah, we're taking video. We're taking video. Yeah, okay. we're we're leaving. Okay. It was. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Is that thank St. You. Jude's? Yeah, we did. We did. It was very good. Thank they you. liked. I don't think. But is there any questions we can answer? No, no, we're good. No, no we're okay. good. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Asked to leave by the food and drink manager at the Trump Winery. <laughs> well, we were nice, and he was nice. Everyone was nice, but he was a little. I was funny because I was a little intimidated. I've never been intimidated by a no. I think look, by a restaurant manager. And his English was good for a Russian. No, I'm kidding. <laughs>